To the Lord our God belongs mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his law which he sets before us. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty Almighty and and most most merciful merciful Father, Father, we have have erred and strayed from the ways of flock sheep. sheep. We We have have followed followed too much much the desires desires of our own hearts. We have have offended against thy holy laws. We have have left undone those things things we ought ought to have done. done. And we, we have done, done those things, things we, we ought to have done. done. But, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare our those who confess their, their faults. Restore those who repent. According to thy promise, declare thy mind. In Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, most merciful Father, for his sake, that, that we may have a righteousness and sober life. Through the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant your absolution and remission of all your sins. <clears throat> True repentance, amendment of life, and grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands are prepared with the dry land. O oh, come, come, let us, let us worship and fall down, and, and kneel before, before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, God and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Let the whole Lord stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the people with this truth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. 
By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water above under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your own towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. However, your father and your mother, honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that your Lord God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of Kenneth. O Lord, the Lord and the ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth, with all that have passed away. All things quake with fear at your presence. You tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of love, passion, long suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do, you do not, not punish, punish as we deserve. deserve. In, In your, your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sins and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the need of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I have known my wickedness only too well. Therefore, Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you shall show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the power 
powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages and of ages. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. The Passover of the, Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord God, God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised, raised up our mighty salvation for us in the house, house of his servant of David. David. And he has saved by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been set the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the words of promise to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness, in holiness and righteousness, and righteousness before, before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge and salvation to his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring on high hath visited us, to give, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and, and, death, and to guide thy feet into the way of peace. peace. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into the hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come forth to the dead and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant, and grant us thy salvation. Endure thy ministries with righteousness, and, and make thy, thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only, only in thee can we live in safety. safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy safety help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the, nor the hope of the poor be taken, taken away. away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil through thoughts which, we, which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Good morning, friends. Uh, as you can see, things are a little bit different this morning. For the last few days, I was just feeling not so perfect physically. Um, no, no concerns about a major virus or anything, but uh, just to be cautious, I uh, decided to steer clear of getting in close quarters with our worship team. So this message is coming from home. And as you can see, um, I have a little helper. I hope that that's okay with everybody. I think as this message proceeds, you'll understand it's particularly appropriate that he is a part of it. So blessings to you this third Sunday of Lent. Moving into our sermon time, aren't relationships just a wonderful thing? Whether it's a romantic partnership or a familial bond or just a plain friendship, it's just so beautiful when two people share some of their essence with each other and form a bond characterized by love and mutuality. So beautiful indeed, and also so very rare. Now, I'm not saying that the sort of connection between human beings is rare. The web of interconnectivity between humans who inhabit this planet is so huge and complex that it defies description. But real relationships? Those are pretty rare. German philosopher theologian Martin Buber perhaps captures this phenomenon best in his timeless book, I and Thou. In this book, Buber explores how the vast majority of the time our engagement with other beings is on a level he calls I-it, as opposed to I-thou. When we're in I-it mode, we are engaging with another being, but we're not receiving that other being in all of its fullness. We're seeing, all, often in some very subtle and invisible ways, that other being as an object rather than what it really is, another wondrous, complex, beautiful being that contains the very essence of God. When we're in I-it mode, real relationship with all of its wonderful potential isn't fully possible. That is only possible when we're in I-thou mode. And I'd suggest that for most people, this state is quite rare indeed. It requires that we be unguarded and vulnerable at a level that can feel strange and uncomfortable. That we be in a place where we're open to the sort of giving and receiving that touches us in the very depths of our souls. I would suggest that the sort of relationship where this is most often challenging in the human sphere is the relationship between the sexes. It would seem from how things usually play out in human affairs that the objectifying that happens when we are in I-it mode 
occurs all too often as men and women engage with each other. In this situation, the other is engaged as an object to be used for comfort, for pleasure, for gratification, but not as a being with whom to have a sublime and transcendent exchange. Physical and sexual violence, usually toward women, is of course an expression of the worst extreme of this phenomenon. Now I openly admit that I have spent way too much of my life in I-it mode, and it is monumentally unsatisfying. But I have also enjoyed a few moments of really being in the I-thou state. These moments have been ones of such life-altering wonder and joy that I would go so far as to say that it is my mission in life to cultivate the ability to have more of them. I have enjoyed a few such moments both with God and with a fellow human being, and I believe that they are, without exaggeration, truly foretastes of heaven. One example I can offer is from the very recent past. I offer this only as an example of getting into the state that is what I believe Buber meant by I, thou. There are, of course, an infinite number of access points for such a state. Eleven weeks ago, my wife and I welcomed a baby boy, this baby boy, into our lives. His birth was quite different from what's considered a normal one, at least in our part of the world. He was born at home, with only the immediate family being in attendance. A set of circumstances that would take far too long to explain right now led us to the conclusion that this was the best and safest option for his birth. Now this meant that I was at various points performing some of the acts that a doctor or midwife might have been doing in the moment, but the invisible character of this situation could not have been more different. Completely unlike the client-server relationship that usually exists between a patient and a professional, my wife and I were working together as a whole, as a single unit. The sense of communion I felt with the divine, my wife, and with this wonderful baby son we now have, <clears throat> transcended anything I have ever felt before. In this moment of raw vul vulnerability, I understood better than ever before the distinction that Buber draws between I-it and I-thou interactions. And so now we come to today's gospel, a variant of it which scholars jokingly refer to as Jesus' temple tantrum is found in all four gospels. Indignant at what he sees going on in the great Jerusalem temple, Jesus loses all composure and causes mayhem, overturning tables and driving out vendors. But what exactly had him so upset? It can't have been the activities themselves. Jesus clearly didn't think that there was anything wrong with plain old commerce, or even with exchanging one kind of money for another. But when he saw those things happening in the temple, he lost his cool. Why? I would venture a guess that when he saw people selling animals to be sacrificed and trading imperial currency with its graven images for coins that had none, he saw this as a visual expression of human beings having an I-it engagement with God, their creator. I would even go so far as to suggest that most human engagements with God have this I-it character. To put it crassly, we often treat God like a divine vending machine. I'm anxious, comfort me. I'm under attack, defend me. I'm missing something I need to live, give it to me. Even our prayers of gratitude can have a pretty transactional character. Thank you for that great thing you just gave me. Now, there is nothing wrong with engaging God in this way. 
In fact, many of the prayers found in the Bible are of this sort. But when this is the only way we engage with God, there is so, so much that we're missing. This, I believe, is what got Jesus so bent out of shape that day at the temple. Jesus wants us to have an I-thou interaction with God. And we can't have that if our prayers and our worship are transactional. For that to happen, the sellers and the money changers have got to go. So what does it mean to have an I-thou interaction with God rather than an I-it one? At some level, this requires that we go to a place where words don't suffice. But I think there is one question that can be very helpful. The question is this, in my prayer and in my worship, am I more centered on what God does or can do or on who God is? If our question is the first of these two, we're probably in I-it mode. But if it's the second, we may well have moved toward I-thou. This is the state that the mystics have often called contemplation, the state of approaching the divine mystery without words, without agenda, without any preconceived notions, simply for the joy of touching that which is above and beyond anything in the realm of creation. Now, if you find that this state keeps eluding you, take heart. You are in good company. Even the great mystics report ebb and flow, and it is ultimately, like all things, dependent not on our initiative, but on divine grace. But I am convinced that persistence pays off, and God does ultimately reward those who seek an I-thou relationship with their creator with exactly that. And we can also actively pursue this I-thou state in human interactions. It's perhaps especially fruitful in interactions between the sexes. Am I more interested in what this person does or can do for me? Or is my focus trained on delighting deeply in who this person is? To conclude, it can be very humbling to ask ourselves these questions and to be honest with ourselves about how we answer them. But the reward is so great. Every time we notice that we're in the first mode, into I-it mode, and allow ourselves to move further in the, into the state of raw vulnerability required to get into the second, into I-thou, we open ourselves up to an interaction marked by unspeakable joy. As far as I'm concerned, even just a few such moments are enough to make life worth living. I encourage all of us to seek as many of them as we can.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world, saying, O gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all the people, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. O gracious Lord, have mercy upon us. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Anglican province of the Congo. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for St. Gregory of Nyssa, church in San Francisco. In our local community, we pray for St. Michael's Catholic Church in Livermore. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy Lord. upon us. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these members of our congregation. We pray for Dave, Christy, John, and Ashley, for Jacob, Jesse and Ernie, and for Bernie and Dottie, as well as those in military service, for Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. O oh, gracious Lord, have mercy, have mercy upon Lord. us. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all in assemblies of judicial roles at every level of government, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon Lord. us. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in the whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be fruitful steward, faithful stewards of the bounty. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon Lord. us. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Andy, Olivia, Becky, Brett M, Carl, Carol, Kathy, Chalopi M, Dave R, David, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava, Tamara, Glennis, Geraldine, Umberto, Candida, and family, Janice, Jim, and Janet, Josh, Lisa B, Luke, Marge, and family, Marie R, Mary L, Mary M, Marissa and family, Monty and Judy, Nick, Nina, Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, Sarah, Michael E, Sylvia P, Steve W, 
and Children, Tamara S., The Herman Family, The Purcell Family, The Moon Family, The Ruzika Family, The Bohr Family, and The Montgomery Family. And for all first responders during the COVID pandemic, for all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, and educators, and especially Brad O and Brad S. We also wish healing prayers for all God's creatures in Indonesia and New Zealand and all the parts of the world that are suffering from the crazy weather. May you all feel God's warm love for you. And all those in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. And we also bless thy holy name for all the servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Sharon H., Linda G., John M., Marie R., Vern P., Joan B., and Elda M., beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of this heavenly kingdom. O oh, gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. And now, please grant these our prayers, O oh Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. O oh, Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Almighty oh, God, God. Father of all our deceased, we, we thine unworthy servants, to give thee most humble and hearty thanks, thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us and Jesus and his love and mercies, that our hearts may be upright and thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.